Life in Japan, One Year On, Looking Back, written by Katsumoto, posted sometime prior to August of 2007. Hmm, you know, I never thought anyone would be interested in what my life is like in Japan. That is, until someone named Jim, who shall remain nameless, asked me like three times to write about it. Haha. <laughs> it's been over a year since I moved here. It's weird, this country has been part of my life for such a long time. Whether it was owning stuff from here, or the three Japanese roommates I had, one in high school, two at university or watching anime, or just generally wishing I lived here. And then of course there is the immersion environment. But still, it can be quite surreal. When I first came, every moment was like, wow, I'm here? I'm here! To this day, whenever I walk into a bookstore filled with low price manga, I almost have to pinch myself because it's just so cool. Kindness. All the Japanese people I know well are the kindest, coolest people I know. Enough said. Even some of the people that I don't know are some of the kindest, coolest people I know. My roommates helped me immensely, both before and after coming here. One roommate's mother used to send clothes for us both. His grandma still sends us her homegrown rice and vegetables. And then there is that lady, a total stranger, who gave me an umbrella on my second day here. It was pouring rain, and I, in the ignorance learned from five years spent in Utah, thought that a raincoat would cover my bases. She walked out of her shop to hand me a portable shelter. Here, keep it, she said. My clothes were soaked through, but my heart was warmed. And then there are all the other nice ladies I met on trains, who started conversations about random stuff, and the nose-picking bureaucrat who knew that the reason I didn't understand him was because I didn't know Japanese, but because it was 6am on a Monday morning and he was both mumbling and covering his mouth with his gold-digging hand. Nice guy. The businessman who let my friends use his cell phone to call me when I forgot to go pick them up at the station, the store lady who said I was handsome, she probably got a fax from my mother telling her to say it, but it still counts. The cashier at the bookstore who dropped everything she was doing to put a band-aid on my bleeding finger. I had a hangnail and slash or a paper cut. Seriously, if I weren't married already, I might have fallen in love right then and there. The many other shop ladies who have handled my birdie Kleenexes when I've had a cold. That's almost too nice. I hope they didn't get sick. Explanation. There aren't that many public trash cans in Japan, so I'm always giving people, like shop clerks, stuff to chuck away. This level of kindness is normal in Japan. People are going to be good to you. I'm going to say some bad things about Japan in a minute, but those bad things absolutely pair in comparison to the good things. And it's easy to forget this. I forget it too sometimes. But really, the worst things that have happened to me here have been condescension and impolite curiosity, which, when you think about it, are not world-ending events, although they may feel like it at the time, especially the time a cop stopped me and asked for ID. I was ready to sue somebody, and Arudo Debito had to suffer through reading a whiny, late night, this cannot be happening to the great Katsumoto email from me. Poor guy. Side note, Arudo Debito is a man born in the United States that became a Japanese citizen and runs a blog called Debito.org. He writes much about life and human rights in Japan. And he's still active to this day, so go check him out, uh, it seems pretty interesting. Expectations of ignorance. I learned Japanese very, very hardcore for almost two years before ever coming here. In my own self-centered ignorance, I thought Japan would somehow know that. I thought that somehow Japan had gotten the memo. But of course it hadn't. So it surprised, and I guess continues to surprise me, how little knowledge of the Japanese language that some Japanese people expect me to have. It's weird because I actually thought the Japanese ability would be considered quite normal in Japan, regardless of ethnicity, and I was actually mourning what seemed to be the inevitable loss of the sort of Prince of Japanese status that I had enjoyed at college. At the same time, I was looking forward to having straightforward human interactions since I made it my task to nuke any language barrier between me and a native speaker of Japanese. By the time I came to Japan, I had more or less achieved that. Anyway, to make a long story short, a large minority of people are still shocked whenever I speak Japanese to them. But unlike my college friends who got over it and accepted me as more or less a member of the Japanese community, a miserly, tight-fisted member who never gave gifts, but a member nonetheless, some Japanese people never get over it. And so, they keep looking for the thing I can't do. They keep looking for the ceiling. They accept I can speak, but don't accept that I can listen and comprehend. Until I listen and comprehend. Then they accept that I can listen and comprehend, but don't accept that I can read. Until I read. Then they accept that I can read, but don't accept that I can write. Until I write. Then they accept that I can write, but don't accept that I can write that kanji. You know, the hard one. Until I write it. Harder. Older. Pre-US occupation. Bigger. More strokes. And then it starts to dawn on them that maybe, just maybe, I am a full human being. It takes a while, but they eventually stop looking at me like I'm an idiot. They go to normal speed and stop trying to mix in badly pronounced English as if it will help me understand better. If I sound better, by the way, it's because I am. Teehee. 
Especially because some people, despite all this, despite the fact that I am almost never without a Japanese book in my face, it is not for freaking decoration, my friend, still just never get over it. There are people who still seem to think that I'm an idiot, who still talk loudly and slowly and mix in random English words, who still stop every 12 seconds to make sure I understand what they're saying, who still preface their statements with things like, I know this may be hard for you to understand because it's in Japanese, but... There are even people who incorrectly correct me, like the guy who tried to tell me that Kigen should be written Kigen, which would make sense given the meaning of the word, but is completely wrong. I didn't have the heart or guts to tell this chap that he was an egot, but quietly refused to correct something that is correct. It shouldn't bother me, I should be a bigger person than that, and lately I just let it go, but it used to bug the heck out of me. Maybe it only bugged me because I was actually insecure? I don't know. Until recently, most native level users of Japanese have been ethnically Japanese. 30 years from now, I imagine it will be a completely different ballgame. Till then, I'll just keep letting wide-eyed curiosity and stupid questions slide. Don't get me started on nurses. Just don't. Including veterinary assistants. I have seriously never met a more condescending group of individuals. Dude, words like gallbladder are really not that complex. I can read the flaming form. Stop questioning me on my decision to feed my cat raw food. Hello? Land predator. Directions. You know the romantic image of adventurous but prudent tourists asking for directions? It's a myth, friends. In Japan, at least. Because in Japan, no one knows where the heck anything is, even in their own neighborhood. The combination of not having a grid system or street signs and being densely populated makes for a high degree of don't have a clue what's around me-ness. Any country in the same situation would produce the same result. So don't bother learning how to ask directions in Japanese. No one can answer you. I'm seriously only like 10% joking. Not even taxi drivers know where stuff is. They'll ask you how to get there. What you do need to know is how to read. So you can use a GPS unit. I have GPS on my phone and it's gotten me safely home from my adventures, on foot and by taxi, many a time. The next time you think that asking someone how to get to Sesame Dori will be a great way to start a conversation, remember that you'll probably only scare that person. I mean, she might freak the heck out at the mere sight of you. Repeat after me. People equals no, machines equals no. Uh, side note, that's people equals N-O, machines equals K-N-O-W. Religion. A lot of people are excited about coming to Japan, all starry-eyed with visions of how great Japan is for not really having the religion. They're all, wow, Japan is a religious but safe, clean and ethical. These people are wrong. I hate to burst your precious little humanist bubble, but Japan has a national religion. Almost everyone practices it, and there's no escaping it. It's called food. On TV, in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, and in the commercial breaks, there is food. When people meet you, they ask, what do you eat? How do you like Japanese food? Have you tried natto? When people like you, they take you out for food. When people visit each other, they bring food. When people go somewhere, they bring back food as a souvenir. On shows that have nothing to do with food, there is a food section. Food is sacred here. It's not for snacking on casually on the train and dropping on the floor. No, that would be immoral. That would be multi Food is for planning around, cooking lovingly, decorating lavishly, garnishing gently, and bowing to gratefully with your chopsticks between your thumb and forefinger before making slurping sounds. Well, with noodles. As you partake, not eat, partake of it. Maybe there is this collective memory of the starvation after the loss of World War II? I could get started on a more serious rant of people for believing in horoscopes and fortune tellers, but we have things like skeptic for that. Then again, I just realized that I'm skeptical about some things in Skeptic, which I guess makes me recursive skeptic at some level. Okay, my inner editor is telling me you don't need to be reading this. There's a lot more to Japan than I just covered, but that should do it for now. It's really cool here, and if you haven't come, do. In fact, why not just learn Japanese and come live here? No, please, really, please do. And be sure to have kids as well, because if we get more fluent immigrants here, people will stop asking me dumb questions. You'll be doing us all a favor, lol. Seriously, it's a wonderful country. Come on over.